Hello and welcome back to yet another Inspired Express end user operation training video brought to you by AMX University. Today, we're going to learn about how to create advanced effects using transitional ins and outs, as well as learning to use multi-layer SVG files as objects on the screen. And you'll see what I mean by that as we go along. Now before we get into that too far, I'm going to show you the basics of how to add effects. Here we have menu.svg, which is a file we created as part of our RSS feed lesson. If you haven't been following along with the various videos, that's okay. Just open a new SVG file and you can follow along that way. Essentially, all I've done to alter the project is I have resized the menu portion of the RSS feed itself and resized it here. And then I added this picture, which is actually a sun, from the clip art, which is in my templates. And I just added that directly to the stage here. And we're going to actually add some effects to this sun, make it fly in and fly out. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If you go into my templates, and you go to Effects, and here we have In Effects and Out Effects. We're going to add both an In Effect and an Out Effect. So we're going to have this fly in, and so we can go base down, which means it's going to fly down, base left, which means it's going to fly left, right, up, or down. And then you've got diagonals, and then there's all different other directions. It'll fly all these different directions. But we're actually just going to do a basic fly straight up here. And it's going to fly from the bottom of the screen up to where it is right now. So we're going to add an up effect. And all you do is you just click that and drag it. And see, we can add it to any of these objects. We can also do it here and just hover over whatever objects we want to add to. Let's just add it to the sun right there. And we get the arrow. So we let go. And that added that effect. And you can see it added because you see right here on the sun, you see this little star. And that means this has an effect on it. And that's a fly in effect. And then let's also add a fly out. And go back to out, flies. So it's going to fly up and then hang there for a while and then fly up. It's what that's going to look like when we're done. So we're going to, again, you just drag it over, you get the orange and you get the arrow and you let go. And there we got our in and out effect. Now I'm going to play that and you can see what that looks like. Go back to the beginning, because it starts right at the beginning. And you have the sun, and it appears. We could sit here wait forever, and that sun's never going to go away, because it is set to play indefinitely. It's never going to fly out. So let's alter the settings here. Right now, the duration is set to media, which means if this was a video, and it had a set duration, then it would disappear at the end of the duration. You may remember this from the nesting video. Same idea. It's set to media, which this is just an image, and so it doesn't have a set duration, so it's just going to stay there forever if we use the duration media. Now we can set it to indefinite, which is the same thing. Or we can go here, and we can set it. And let's just set the duration to 5 seconds, so 5S, and press OK. But the duration is set to loop here. We can see this looping. Since it's set to loop, that isn't going to go away. It's still going to stay there because it's set to repeat. So we need to turn the repeat off. So we go down here and turn the repeat off. And press OK. And there we go. Now if we press back to the beginning and we press play, It'll set, and it'll hang there for a couple seconds, and then it flies away. Now, if you notice, it's only flying in from the bounds of this object. So we actually need to alter the bounds of the object to the edge of the slide so that it'll actually fly in from the edge of the slide. Now, it's going to center wherever you have it. So we actually wanted it to fit right in here in the middle of these two arcs here, so it kind of set kind of nicely in there. So to do that, you're just going to have to stretch it larger than the sign, and you just kind of got to play with it a little bit until it gets exactly the way you want. And there we go. That's pretty good. And then now we can go back, and you can see that it'll fly in from the bottom there and hang out and then fly out the top of the screen. And that looks a lot better, and you're actually seeing it fly in and out. And that's really all there is to adding effects. But we're actually going to do a little bit more here than that. And actually, I don't really need that sign. I just was using that as an example. So I'm going to delete that sun. 
And we're actually going to create something else here, a little bit more of an advanced effect. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're actually going to create an animated logo that goes right here using fade ins and outs. But to do that, we're actually going to create a new SVG file. Now, SVG files can be full screen, like this SVG file is actually full screen and is playing in our main playlist, if you remember we did that in the nesting content video. But you can also use an SVG file to fill a portion of the screen. That's what we're going to do. We're going to create an SVG file that fills a portion of the screen, and then we're going to add several objects into that location, and then put that onto the screen. And then we can reuse that piece of signage on several different signs and it'll become basically an animated object that we can then reuse. So I'm going to right click and do new SVG file. Now if you've noticed, we have the option to choose any aspect ratio for our SVG files. We've already set the aspect ratio for our project when we created our project, but we can still select aspect ratios for the individual files. And the reason for that is we may not want a 16 by 9 piece of signage. We may not want the signage to be that shape. We may want a 4 by 3 which would give us a shape similar to the one we have here, which is a more of a square image. And if we wanted it to be about this shape, then we could use a 4 by 3. You could use a 16 by 10, which is a little bit narrower in its height. And if you could do that and then have space for a ticker or something at the bottom. But we're actually going to use 9 by 16. And that's actually going to be a vertical image, which is going to stretch here and be taller than it is wide. And so that's actually what we're going to do, and that'll let us fill this space right here pretty well with an SVG file that's 9 by 16. And so we're going to select the aspect ratio of 9 by 16 for this SVG file that we're going to create. So here we go, new 9 by 16svg rename this, and I'm just going to rename this logo effect. And so I'm going to open that. Now you see, that kind of looks a little odd with our player being set the way it is. And if you remember, we can adjust this player. This player is set to display 16 by 9 images. Since this is a 9 by 16 image, it's going to look a lot better if we change our view. Now if you remember, we can adjust our preview orientation, which will help us see our sign a lot better. And help us eliminate all this unused gray space that we're not really using for anything. So I'm just going to turn that to vertical and that'll let us view our vertical signage here a little better. Now again, we just need to delete this text because we don't need it, and we're just going to add our objects directly onto this signage piece here. Now in one of our earlier videos, we added amxlogo.svg, and that's the AMX University logo, and we're just going to add that on here, and we're actually going to add multiple copies of that, and we're going to have that animate, fading in and out. And it's kind of hard to see, being the way it is, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a background, and we're going to delete this background later, but right now I'm just going to add it so we can see what we're doing. So if we go to backgrounds, 9 by 16, we can just use a gradient background, that's fine. Just so we can see what it is we're doing a little easier. And I'm going to add multiple copies of this AMX University logo onto the screen. I'm actually going to resize them. So I'm going to add several copies of this AMX University logo at different locations on the screen. All right, so I've added multiple copies of AMX University logo all over this piece of signage at different sizes and locations. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add fade in and out to all of these AMX University logos. And then once I add that effect, I'm going to adjust the timing so that they fade in and out at different times so it'll look like this Amex logo is flashing all over that screen. So I just go here, and there's several different fades, but we're just going to do the basic fade. So fade in. And I'm just going to drag it over and add a fade in to every one of these pieces of signage. And there we go. All our logos have fade ins. I'm going to do the same thing with outs. I'm going to fade out to every one of our logo pieces. Now, if you remember, for this to work, all these logos have to have a set duration and they have to not be repeating. So I'm going to give them all a duration of two seconds and turn off the repeating on all of them.
All right, well, I've adjusted the timings on all of the different copies of the logo and added in and out effects to all of them. However, since they're all set to start at the exact same time, they're all going to fade in and out at once. I'll show you what that looks like. Go back and I'll play that. See how they all fade in and out at the exact same time? That's not really the effect I'm really going for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the start time. So we're going to adjust the start times, the begin time, for each of these. Now this is set to 0, 0. I want this 0 0.5. So that means one half second in. So I'm going to go OK. And this, I'm going to have a start time of 1, which is the half second after 0.5. So that's 1. OK. And this is going to be 1.5 and so on. All right, so I've adjusted those timings. Now let's see what that looks like. Now you saw how those faded in and out at different points. Looks pretty good. All right, now one more thing before we add this onto our screen. We need to go into Properties, and we need to give this a duration. Right now the duration is set to indefinite. But we actually want to give this a set duration so that we can have this file looping on our main file. So we're actually just going to adjust our duration here. And to find out what duration we need to do, we need to make sure that the file is done whenever our last effect is done. So our last effect starts at 2.5 and is 2 seconds long. So that is going to be 4.5 is when it's going to be over. And so we actually need to give it a duration of 4.5 seconds. And press Enter. And save that. And you can see that's going to play. And at the end of 4 seconds, it repeats. And you can see what that looks like now. And so now we're going to add this back into our sign. We're actually going to delete this background because we don't really need it. And then save that and close it. And let's reopen menu.svg. Now, again, we need to adjust our aspect ratio again. We need to change our orientation back to horizontal. And go find logo effect.svg. And then just drag that onto our screen. Press Control so we get a plus sign and let go. And then we can just add that onto the screen here. There you go. Now we can play this and see how that looks. Now that's repeating because if you go into here, because our duration is set to media and it's repeating, this file is going to continue playing that effect as the menu opens up. And so that's kind of a cool little effect and you can do all sorts of things like this. And you can create reusable pieces of signage and you could create a single signage element and then place this at multiple points in your sign. And so it's reusable and it adds a cool effect and you didn't have to use anything besides Inspired Express to create that. So I hope you take the principles you learned today and try to create some advanced effects in your signage.